I'm on the slide two, um, showing all the learning units that we're going to be covered. There are nine in total if I exclude the mock exam. Um, introduction to company financial statement. So remember on the first slide, what we said is we're going to be doing accounting for companies. So the second slide that we just from just said, please concentrate on this learning unit. So these are the aspects when we're dealing with the companies we'll be looking under those learning unit. Okay, so there's in much under the learning unit one as far as the slides are, are, are concerned in that presentation. But what I've covered when I was preparing there was the key things normally will start my classes, all of them to say what is really expected from you. And then in this case, they just want you to be comfortable with the background of the companies, especially the Companies Act, as well as the financial I mean, International Financial Reporting Standards, we usually call it as IFRS. Second thing that you guys need to be able to do there, recording the accounting entries. So accounting, yes, it's about recording, recording and generalizing and, and, and. So one of them will be recording, where you're dealing with certain applicable issues that has to do with the shares. So we'll cover that. We need to be able to do the recording of the issue of cap issue. What is the issue of capitalization of shares? How are you going to deal and record that? Know the types of companies. Name the users of annual financial statements. The last two. I've seen in the past exams, it comes, I think, not the last two, the um, third and fourth bullet, where I've got that in red recording of accounting entries. One of the exams that I've seen, I think it must have been two, you know, so what they did is you had a combination of multiple choice question. So this question of doing the cap issue was there, where they give about five questions up front uh, on the multiple choice. Uh, with uh, four possible answers, then you need to pick up one. So some of them you might need to kind of be very comfortable with the recording uh, of transaction around the issue of shares and the capitalization of shares there. All right, under the Companies Act and IFRS, I'm not going to be tutoring, I'm not going to be lecturing guys, just I needed just to brought the emphasis on the key concepts that will be the problem and that you, you, you might come across in all our learning units, but I would like to be spending more time on getting the, you know, the issues that I, 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 you guys will need help with. That is where I'm going to be coming in. So don't expect me to open the tutorial later and go through through everything that will be there. But the things that are worrying and those that are of great importance definitely will be spending a little bit of time uh, around that. So how would you describe a company? A company can be described as an association between the persons that work together with the aim of making a profit. Let's note that. Uh, a company, it's the entity, the legal person which is incorporated under the Companies Act. So instead of being Mulefe as a person at home affairs, here we are incorporated under the Companies Act. So normally you'll find the majority of the companies that are registered with CIPC, they've got the name. So that is administered under the Companies Act. And then the second part that we had to worry about is the IFRS. What is the IFRS? We said it's the International uh, Financial Reporting Standard. It's a set of international accounting standard that state how particular types of transaction and other events should be recognized. Let's highlight that, measured and reported. Hence the emphasis uh, by the lecture to say you need to be able to, to do your annual financial statement because all those things that you'll be doing with the transaction or events, they need to end up in the financial statements. So that is the combination and how you deal with that. If this tells you how you need to account uh, to go about accounting such transactions or events. 
right before we start with the share cap is there any other questions or hand of anything that has been covered so far so when you guys are looking at the definition of the share under the share transaction what it is it's normally the, the capital that gets contributed usually it gets be divided into small units uh, called shares those are more like the contributions to to the company so you gonna call yourself a shareholder in that business so each shareholder shares in profits of the entity in relation to the value of his or her shares and then we look at the share capital what is it as i've mentioned earlier it is just a contribution by you as a shareholder into the company so it will be known as a, a share capital your contribution to that company the share capital that the company does issue is equal to the issued share capital why i brought this up the ascertain rules once you've already uh, issued the shares in terms of how you're going to account that in terms of the companies act and then the maximum number of shares and the classes of shares a company is authorized to issue is equal to authorized share capital so it's also the guidance to say once you've got this maximum number of shares it's called um, authorized share capital there are also rules and regulations on how you deal around the issue of the authorized share is the same thing with the issue of the issued share capital it, it, it's more of the work you should be covered or if you've not yet covered under the mercantile law among other subjects that deals with that but with accounting we'll start moving in terms of how do we do accounting around the shares and share capital among other transactions let's look at the share transaction with accounting recording 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 will be our key things initially we'll look at recording the accounting entries applicable to the issue of shares that is fine so currently we are moving on dealing with the accounting of the issue of shares still under the share transaction So I've made an example here where we've got Mateco LTD issues 1,000 shares, 1,000 ordinary shares at 180 per share. So I think the requirement here was that prepare the journal entry uh, for this uh, transaction. Uh, no man, I think that's the part that I, I need to start slowing down because I'm seeing numbers, then I tend to get excited. How normally we'll deal with accounting or how I sometimes prefer my student, they need to be able to do that. So for instance, the question wanted me to do the journal entries. I, I need to be kind of be able to do the journal entry. I need to, I need to Pause that as someone that had over maybe five years or 10 years not having seen an accounting. So, general entry might need to assist. I think if it's Kevin, if I'm not mistaken, to see when the question say general, prepare the journal. So, in an exam, you need to have an highlighter. It could be a pen or whatever, but normally I would recommend you guys start getting the note so that once we read the required. Uh, carefully you know exactly what it's expected of you so that we don't mix the two is there anyone that can assist maybe kevin on how the journals look like or if someone say prepare the journals what you'll be doing in that case call a friend let's take one or two hands to assist on kevin on how the journal will look like because it needs to come natural on the sixth when the question say please generalize this uh, transaction so everyone 78 percent of us in that exam will need to be comfortable to do that without a doubt uh, <clears throat> thank you thank you sir good evening colleagues uh, i think when we are talking about the the, the channels we are talking about debit uh, and, and and the credit side so yeah basically that is what we will be looking at to say which transition that needs to be on the credit side in which you know, um, which transaction needs to be on the debit thanks there you go Swanilo, you, you you were correct the way we will be recording so we need to have the debit 
and the credit side. Let's get to the journal entries. So you will need a two column, uh, Kevin, where the first one, normally you start with the debit and then you create two columns. Then the second one will be the credit. So you need the debit and the credit. So your credit will be on your right, your debit will be on the left. So in terms of writing the description, you say in this case, we're assuming these shares, we paid cash for them. So you will debit bank because there's a money that is coming to the business and then you'll credit the share capital. So what we did there, you take that 1000 shares, you multiplying it by 100, uh, 180 cent per share. So there is that calculation as I was trying to explain earlier on before the question of generalizing. We need a separate uh, page with accounting where you will be doing your calculation very clearly. I'm the person that does not prefer to have this calculation sitting next to, to the journal entries. Can you see there, my C1, I wouldn't have done that uh, 100 multiplied by, I mean 1000 multiplied by 180 in my journals. I usually like to keep my workings very clean but can you see where do i need to show it next to the share capital i've got c1 there so that is the c1 so i'm telling the marker to say go and check where i got that 1800 of the shares it will be coming to the credit side as well as the bank will have been debited with uh, 1800 so try to make sure that you don't do your calculation on the face of 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 the key required of the question that could either be a note it could be a journal it could be whatever because these calculations can be lengthy and it could be very messy so as lesson number one for today we need to separate our calculations while we are answering the required Is anyone comfortable with that approach thank you what I added lastly then, uh, I said, please note that the authorized share capital, it's not always going to be equal your issued share capital because of certain reason that you've got that it's more of a theoretical one, they, they will never come to be the same. So once that is done, there are other implications, but we're not covering that for FAC 2601. Let's go to the next slide. On the type of the shares we're going to have, we've got that ordinary shares. Those are your equity shareholders. So under the capital session, that's where you'll be dealing with the ordinary shares. Once we'll see that once you do the preparation of financial statements, it's going to be sitting there. So who are these ordinary shares holders? Uh, ordinary shares represent the equity ownership in a company and give you the full voting rights at an AGM as well as dividends. You also could have the types of shares called preference shares. The preference shares are just the other financial, uh, financial instruments, but they are instruments that have the debt in them, that they could have the fixed dividends, as well as the equity capital appreciation characteristics. This could be tricky, but we'll touch them if number of questions uh, comes around the preference shares. Preference shareholders are paid fixed rate dividends uh, before the dividends are paid to the ordinary shareholders. So these are the most special one. They take preference over the first one that we've covered, the ordinary shares. So this one they get attended first before the ordinary shares. Let's look under the types of preference shares that we could have. We could have cumulative preference shares. So a cumulative as a keyword there, a cumulative preference shareholder retains his or her rights to the dividends from year to year, even if no dividends are declared. So you do not wait for the company to declare the dividends because these are the cumulative. So once, once, when they issued them initially, they said the dividends will be paid specifically almost every year. Um, 
other elements on the cumulative is that a fixed preferential dividend accumulates if it's not paid out annually. So you keep getting that money even if the company doesn't help, but at some point when they start making money, they will need to pay you an accumulated uh, amount of dividends out. The characteristics in them is that the cumulative preference dividends not declared or paid should be disclosed. So that's another disclosure issue we've got in our annual financial statement. Those are the three things that you'll you need to pick up and learn and know about the cumulative preference shares. On redeemable preference shares, a preference share that provides for redemption on a specific date, we'll deal with those ones maybe if we get is it in the second year or third year on how to deal with those financial instruments there. I'm not seeing much of those. Redeemable preference shares, another thing that at an option of the holder, it meets uh, the definition of the financial liability if the issuer has an obligation to transfer financial assets to the holder of the share. So don't stress about this big terminology for now. We should be getting that understanding once we do the financial instruments. I think in unit eight, that would be way, way towards your exam in the mid of May for now. This one is, I will note as a hot cake into exam, the capitalization of shares put important under the capitalization of shares. The capitalization issue is also referred as a bonus issue. So that's another terminology that can be used interchangeably in an exam. Under the capitalization of shares, the shares are issued in the same proportion as the existing shareholding and merely a book entry which converts the reserves into the share capital. There's a problem that is happening here. We need to go to that one very slow. What they're saying here, we're going to have the shares that are issued in the same proportion as the existing uh, shareholding. So basically you are doing some arithmetic maths, if I were to call it that, for the lack of the better word, without affecting anything around your, your ordinary number of shares that you've got or the shares that are already being in issue. So the emphasis is that what exactly is the objective on what you're doing there? You are merely passing the book entry where you are converting the reserves, meaning they are available there, into the share capital. Maybe for emphasizing on what the reserves is, this will be your cumulative inverted commas saying profit that the company has been having over time. Because once you move the profit, once uh, the profit after tax, you'll pass one general entry that needs to go to your, to, your, to your equity under the reserve. So the profits from the statement of comprehensive income will end up under the statement of changes in equity. So it's around that profit you could have been made over the years. It's referred to as reserves. So let's note that terminology there. So under the cap issue again, what you need to, to, to notice is that the number of shares uh, held will increase, but the total value will remain the same. So there's some sort of a dilution that happens uh, with the capitalization of, of shares. So those are those components. I think that all three of them are important. Sometimes it could be called the bonus issue. You need to know that you're just passing the, the, the book entry, keeping the same proportion as the existing shareholding. And then that the number now of your shares held would increase, but the total value overall will not increase. Okay. So in issuing these shares, the issuer will convert the reserves into share capital. So as you're saying, you're moving from those profits accumulated one into now the share capital. So there are about four things that you need to know will take uh, play once you're dealing with the capitalization of shares. Let's now check the real accounting on how things will look like if we do the general entry. 
Can you see the lectures have been emphasizing that overall you guys need to be comfortable with the debits and credit. Um, I think you she mentioned it twice in their comments. So journal entries are very important. So the debits and credit will be very, very important for us. Remember what I, I, I've said uh, under the second point, those that are taking the notes. The second one was that you are merely passing a book entry which converts the reserves into the share capital. So once you're looking at the equity, remember the rules of elements of financial statement. I think in the next class I will provide the rules. So because we've got five elements of uh, financial statement in my days, a long time ago when I was uh, doing accounting, I decided to create five rules for the debits and credit. I would like to share that maybe next on Saturday to see how you're going to deal with those things, to have that quick reminder on how to deal with that. Because remember, the reserves is sitting under your equity part. So it's a question of how do I go about reducing the reserves? Because all that you're doing is you are converting the reserves into the share capital. So we said when I created those rules is that the equity will only decrease with the debit entry. Hence the first entry they will say debit retained earnings because now I'm converting these reserves into the share cap. And then the second one, because I'm just increasing. So can you see what is happening? The number of shares that are held by you, they will start to increase. How does the equity increase? It increase on the credit side. Hence, you've got that share capital being increased. So I think it's only time I think I've noticed accounting has those basic rules. I'm trying to reduce my profits, meaning the reserves. How do I reduce my profits with a debit entry? And how do I increase my equity? It increase on the credit side. So this will be the general entry that you should be comfortable to pass whenever you are dealing with the capitalization of shares. Everyone comfortable. So this is more of the background theory that you're gonna, gonna be needing from there under that last uh, a bullet in terms of generalizing. This will be the only journal that you could pass on every question that you're gonna deal with that. It's gonna be the changing of the proportion in terms of what were the cap issue uh, in terms of the arithmetic being issued. Let's look at that. I think I made one example. So you could have three or four examples just to get the comfort on the things that you will play with. Okay. So when you look at that, what I had, I might have grabbed it somewhere. The balances were taken from the book of COVID-19 LTD on December 31, 2020. When you look in their trial balance, they had the issued ordinary share capital that is at one run shares. That's why they had number of shares. How many shares were there when it was issued at 100 rand? All right. So yes, the trial balance will show me the amount of 150. So those shares were at one rand. So when you do the calculation there, how many shares were, were issued ordinarily? I think I needed to ask that question. I think that was when, when Katlaho came in. A show of hands, the answer to that, the screen will be coming now. The trial balance is showing the ordinary share at 150,000 in total. So I'm asking how many, the number of shares. So those are the arithmetics we need to be able to comfortably work with them in an exam. There it's coming. The COVID books, there's that amount of 150 shares. You guys get the question? I, I think we have 150 shares because one share is one share is one rent, so it's 150 divided by one, so we get 150 shares. All right, was that on Atlanta? Any second or opposite? Martelin saying 150 shares. I'm seconding here. Okay, thanks for the hands. 
who is still confused how did we get that one i think let's get to that remember our objective was to assist everyone so we must be all seven the three of us be on the same page the question was was everyone comfortable on how we got 250. Magdalene has done that for us. The trial balance have shown 150,000 in rent. You'll see now that the shares were at one rent each. So you take that 150,000 rent in the trial balance, you divide by the value of the share, which is one rent, to, to get the 150 shares. You're right, Omtanda. So someone uh, hijacked our screen. It's coming shortly now. Hello, Chuka, are you happy now? Can you see the calculation under the chat? I can see it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I can see it. Thank you. Let's just move right along. Thanks. Why I'm now going very, very slow. Once you're dealing with the cap issue, these are the basic things you might need to to kind of pick up from yourself to say, oh, okay, it means there were 150 shares. So once they come now and tell you the story uh, like this one, so basically what they will tell you from then is that the retained income had 160,000. So that thinking that on the first one that, oh, meaning they are having 150 shares, you note that mentally. That's a retain earnings and bring it up because on the second bullet on my previous slide, it was saying is the retain income is going to be converted into the share capital. You remember that debit share, uh, debit retained earnings to credit the share capital. So the story is about that. So you need to be also comfortable once you see the return earnings being provided to say what is its purpose. Then you get to the story. Check when was this? At the beginning of the year in 2021, the directors decided to make the capitalization issue in an exam. If it's trying to be a difficult exam, they'll say they decided on a bonus issue. So those terminology, remember, they need to be work interchangeably at one rent. Now this is that arithmetic maths or maths 101, where one share for every three shares previously issued. Remember that issue of knowing the number of shares was very important. Yvonne, please let's switch off the mic, the, the, the camera. So with the minimum effort on distributable reserves. Do we get the question now to say where are they heading with this? The part that I've highlighted in in yellow. So what should be the next question? Thanks for the reaction. Now what should be the next question once you're sitting there? Raise your hand, assist us. What should be your question? I think the next question you should ask yourself is how many shares are going to be capitalized? Cap like you need to calculate the shares that are going to be capitalized using the ordinary shares. Thank That's you. The first view we're having there. Magdalene is saying how many shares was issued. And the rest, what are we saying? Let's capitalize on that last class. Let's participate. We need to learn cap issue. Where are they? And so, go ahead. All right. Thank you, sir. So, we determine the number of shares capitalized first, and then we will have to record on the general journal. Okay. Thanks for that, man. How many shares were issued? Last round of set of thoughts. Someone is supporting Elios there with taking that 150 shares we initially calculated. They, what they did there, they multiply with the proportion that they are using one share for every three shares 
uh, previously held. Do you guys support that part? See the reaction. So guys, this is how I'm going to be running the class. Where there's going to be accounting, I'm going to be stopping and handing over to you. So we're not going to just only get to the answer. The thinking that is where I want to extract from that, then in that way, I'll be happy that everyone understands. Thanks for the reaction. Gap issue, bonus issue, we know that. Shares are issued in the same proportion as the existing shareholding. Can you see there what is happening? That 150 is what is existing. We had to calculate that 150,000 divided by one rent to get the number of shares. Now, the number of shares held will increase. So now for every one that you had, you're going to be getting extra three shares from the existing 150,000 shares. There we've dealt with that. We know that we've got now 150, that proportion you are correct, Kevin. I'm happy that you follow me. One share for every three share issued. So you've got 150 divided by three. That's correct. Everyone is agreeing with you. Then it gives you 50,000 shares be issued. Is everyone compatible up until that point? Thank you. Yes, sir. Happy, happy. I want to see everyone happy because once I move, I'm gone. <laughs> I'm happy. So and then what we do, I always go back to my keynotes. That general, I know because remember we were given at 160 from there, retained earnings. So now we're trying to reduce that and crediting the share capital. Please note that the capitalization of shares may be issued using the only reserves that we're gonna be dealing with is the retained earnings. So when you come to that example, that I did under the COVID company. You see, you had the share capital, you had the retained earnings, we had the question. So can you see how I plug things? So you're thinking, should to say, if I'm touching this, what I'm going to use this for? So you need to be very compatible to, to kind of answer those questions at the back of your head. And then that calculation we did, and then it's debit the retained earnings and credit the share capital. So this is the capitalization of the, the shares. So I just did one example. So as you do tutorial letters and all that, so this is how you'll be dealing with the last two slides I took, they were very important. So majority of the question you'll bump into will be just sharing that yellow one, that is what will be changing. But the thinking process that you need to go through that should be the same as the one that we covered in slide 10. So that once you know how to think about it, meaning you know this, once you do two extra questions, you should be fine. In an exam, there's nothing that will trick you as far as the cap issue uh, gets attended to. With that, this actually brings me to the end of the first unit, the learning unit in that introduction. My contact details are available. It's 072-283-5242. I noticed your hand will come to that. Just needed to get the numbers out so that we can get into the WhatsApp group with the admin. I hope this hand was first. Yes, you can go. Um, I would like to ask if the capitalization issue was, let's say maybe it wasn't at one rand, maybe three rands. Mm -hmm. So in order to, to calculate the capitalized shares, would I say 150,000 shares times three rands 
divide by three. Okay. Let's pack that. Let's get the thinking process. Whoever is going to assist with answering that, let's start there. Let's unpack the thinking process. Instead of having one rent, if it now was three rent. Yes. Yes. What is the first thing first? Remember, try to stop there for a second and ask everyone. You always start with the first things first. We need to get first the number of shares that were yes. issued initially at three rent. So what is it? It's going to be 150,000. Yes. Carry on. Times three rent. No, you're not timesing. You're dividing. You're dividing. To get first, what are you doing with the timesing and dividing? You need to get the objective first. Here we are giving 150,000 worth of share capital. But I need to know now if the shares was issued at three rent, how many shares were ordinarily issued initially? So you need to get that one first. So you'll do that by dividing. OK, no, sir, I'm good with that one. No, no, you're not good. We're understanding. That's why you're asking. Carry on what okay. we are doing. OK. Um, if I do know that I have 150 ordinary shares, mm. and then I'm told that the, the capitalization issue was at three rents of one share for every three shares. So my question is, would it be 150,000 ordinary shares times the three red, the times the three rents divide by the one over three now? It's a very good question. Yes. You're comfortable with the first step, but then when I lose you, so that share cap issue that you're talking is at three rent instead of one rent. One rent, yes. Plus, what are your inputs? Um, my input is, I think you should have to check the number of shares before she can come with the, the unit price. So she, she should just take the 150 times 1 divided by 3 of shares. Then after that, it whereby she will get the, she will use the unit price to get the, um, the capitalization amount. Let's get off the, the video, um, Utrecia. Sorry? Just switch off your video. I'm trying. Okay, it's all right, don't worry. Can we pack a bit about aiding me? Let's let's attend to the question first. We're still in the class on Saturday. Don't worry at eight. Who's getting the correct answer? I like the class. We're creating another homework. We'll, we'll kick on from there. Think about it. I like it when you say you think. Let's look at slide 10 one more time. What are the rules around the cap issue? The second one, it says the shares are issued in the same proportion as the existing. So we need to get that one right. So we're not going to trick you with crazy proportion. The number of shares will increase. So those are the questions you're doing that say, whatever am I doing, are my shares increasing? But look what is interesting. The total value of the share portfolio will remain the same. Is one rent that was originally issued versus the three rent. What is the story now? What are you doing there? Think about it. You still have time to, to do that, but think carefully about it if you're answering. Hence, when I, I'm back on slide 10, the number of shares will increase. You need to answer that question. Did it increase, yes or no? If it doesn't increase, there's a problem. But check this, the total value of the share portfolio will remain the same. Is the problem here about the issuing of the shares before you even get to reducing the reserves? You need to get the proportion correct with that. To say something happens with that. 
But think about it if you cannot answer it. Remember, they were ordinarily issued at one rand. Now, they throw not say, no, what if it was three rand? This is what I want out of you guys. So this is exactly what I want. Thank you for that question. It's very brilliant. Don't have sleepless night on it. Saturday, we're still meeting. Think about it. There's something that really needs to happen if that is the case. If you are confident that your answer will be the same as Saturday, you can shoot and answer that one. So if the shares are issued at three rank now, I think the, the value will increase. Let's see a calculation. OK. Hello, sir. Can I have a go? I'm not sure if I'm correct. No. Why she's looking for the answer, yeah? Yes. Uh, I was thinking, since shouldn't we apply the very same principle whether the share was issued at one rent or two rent? The way I was thinking, mm -hmm. since now the ordinary share capital is at three rent, so we say 150, we divided by three, which mm -hmm. we, are, we are going to 50, um, 50,000 ordinary share. And then when we change the statement to let, recapitalize. Let, let's pack that before you do that. Historical things with accounting, you can't change much. So we, we're not changing that initial one rent. Let's get to that one first. That 150,000 right. divided by one rent, we're not changing. Oh, OK. All right. Good. You want to give it ahead or I stopped you before you not went ahead? Eh? No, let me go back and ponder about it. I thought Good. we were changing the initial statement. Any other question, it's all right. It's something to ponder. You can only answer once you're ready. Any other question, don't 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 think too much about it. It's all right. So just to time, especially those that are done with the studying in revision to see what really happened. Double check that. Any other questions so far? Lazia? Yeah? Hi, how are you? Yeah. Okay, in my understanding, I believe that if because when you, you read about the capitalization, then it says that the capital issue is frequently also referred to as a bonus, right? Then they say the shares are issued in the same proportion as the exi existing shareholding. So I believe that um, if shares are issued at one round, also when they, they issue a capitalization, it still needs to be at one right. round. So they, they, we wouldn't get a situation where they say capitalization is issued at three rand, but then the ordinary share were issued at one rand. Interesting. Opening the cans of Fuem Thank you, Luazi, for that. Another thing to ponder around. Last question. <laughs> Um, sir, my name is Hudson. I don't know how to raise the hand here on the app. I just want to comment on the capitalization shares. Don't stress. It's okay. Go ahead. Okay. So I think in the case whereby you're going to divide it by three, the number of shares will reduce because they will now go from fifty from 150,000 to 50,000. So that also raises eyebrows. Why are the shares, are the shares reducing? I think before Loise, I stopped that thinking that we wouldn't go to change that one round at all. Because okay, now, you'll be, yeah, we wouldn't change that divide by three. We wouldn't have done that. Okay. And accounting we call restating. So there was nothing wrong. So the, what the statement you're saying is when you guys will be dealing with restatement to say, oh, actually, it was never supposed to be one round. Instead, it was three rand. Then meaning you're going back to do your books backward with the number of things. So we're not doing that at this point in time. Let's let's park that. So what came in here say you guys are not done with all the questions around the cap issue. That's what I'm picking up. Those are the good two scenarios that was in the, in the owner of the question has brought it up. Let's double check that to be comfortable while we'll be referring to, to, to slide 10 much more in detail. Then that way we'll consolidate our response will kick on on that. 
on, on, on Saturday on those two to say which one is the right one. Next time when you're answering the question, we don't think. Because once you start thinking, you want to be marked either right or wrong. So let's avoid using the think and attempt in answering. And that way, we will also boost our confidence in getting to answer and participate in the class. Yanel, what did you do there? Unmute and explain yourself what you were doing, Yanel, there on your last calculation. So what I did, um, I took the number of shares uh, ordinary issued, mm -hmm. divide by three, which is that uh, three uh, for every th three, uh, three rand for every three shares, ne? and then um, I multiplied go back, by that, go back, Go back to that part, <laughs> yes. I want everyone to All be right. comfortable when you answer. With that three rand, I want to hear you carefully then. Okay, I don't know how to okay. put it, but um, <laughs> so <laughs> the lady changed the question there to uh, a capitalization issue of three rent. Yeah. Um, and then what did she say? Uh, of one share every. So is a cap so capitalization issue. Okay, the cap issue, yes. let's quickly get that. It's three rent for the cap issue. So it didn't change the whole question for okay. one for every three. Carry on. Three rand for every three shares. Okay, yeah. so what I did, I divided by three the number of uh, of ordinary shares issued. Then we got fifty thousand shares. Yeah. To be capitalized, and then I multiplied by three rand to get the value. So it uh, goes back to hundred and fifty. What would be your general entry? So my general entry will be. Um, so we said we'll debit retained earnings and then no, credit uh, 150,000 mm -hmm. and then uh, credit share capital with 150,000 as well. Then so, the narration will be um, issue capitalization. One possible answer is Yonel's answer for Saturday's thinking. Bring that one up. Now you are kind of really wiping off your retained earnings. That we've got that. Loz, is it the old hand or you want to bring another one? Let me recognize and type saying before you. Type saying, go ahead. So the, as the point number three on the capitalization shape. The slide on the capitalization fall says that the number of shares held will increase. So I took 150,000 and I times it with three rand. So the numbers are increasing and the total value share portfolio will remain the same. And then I took that 450 that I got and I divided with one over three which I bought 150, so I'm not sure if I'm correct. So the answer you, is 450 again. You'll be the first one to type on the chat uh, that calculation for us on, on, on Saturday. Then we've got Yonela's one that she will retype okay. on, on, on Saturday. Can we pack that before you get worried? Okay. <laughs> Can we now relax right. now? The class is finished, but we're not All leaving. Right. Okay. You see what I picked up? There's a lot of things. We need to come to one answer. In accounting, we need to always have one correct answer. So that's what we'll be striving for going forward. Our thinking after this needs to be the same especially the 70 odd number of us that are here. Do you guys see where I'm going with this? We need to share the same understanding. So I got two or three, if not four, different ways of doing things. Correct or incorrect, that's another question, but we need to, to narrow it at least to one way. 